Hello all. Welcome to my uh, channel. Uh, today in this session, we'll see how to uh, sign up for Databricks Community Edition. Just Google it out, uh, Databricks Community Edition, wherein you will have this link. And then you will land up on this page. Databricks is something which you can use it with any of the cloud platforms like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud. And you can work with many of uh, the different programming languages like Spark, SQL, Python, Scala, and uh, many of uh, the things. Even if you are working on a community edition, you can work with all these things. Uh, just to sign up, you need to fill up the basic details and just click the link here, like get started for free. And then you will have this dialog box opening up. And there is a slight tricky part in this. You need to select any of these web services uh, if at all you want to have a paid subscription and to have a paid subscription you need to select any of these things but if you want to have uh, a community edition wherein you can use databricks for free you just have to click on the link at the bottom like uh, it is written in very small letters i'm not sure why it is but you can click on this link as the arrow is pointed out and then you will have an automated email pops up in your mailbox wherein uh, you can click on this link to just reset the password and then you can start Databricks for free. The channel again. Uh, just now we have created a Databricks Community Edition login. So we can uh, directly log in here. You just uh, have to Google it out and uh, uh, save this in your bookmark, uh, Databricks Community Edition login. <coughs> Once you click here, you will be directed directly to your uh, user interface. I mean, I've already logged into my uh, user account and uh, the password has been saved in uh, my browser. So it has directed me directly to the, <coughs> sorry, uh, directly to the uh, user interface. Uh, this is just a user interface wherein you can uh, start your uh, things. Like if you're uh, using a community edition, you have to create clusters uh, every time. I've already created my cluster. You have to click here, create cluster. Or else, I mean, I'll uh, terminate this cluster once if you want uh, uh, to check how the clusters have been created. Delete it and then deleting the cluster has been deleted. So, if, uh, to run uh, any program or to work on the database, you always have to have a working cluster with you. This uh, have to, you have to click here, click create clusters, and by default, you can give any name, uh, it doesn't matter. And then uh, uh, for the Databricks runtime, I'll always choose uh, the latest ones, maybe uh, one before that, it doesn't matter. Uh, as soon as you create uh, these things, you will need to press this button, create clusters. Uh, so <coughs> Databricks for the community edition will always give you 15.3 uh, uh, GB of RAM, two cores of processors and one Databricks unit, uh, which is much, uh, higher uh, than your regular Google Collapse. And you can, if you have a, a Databricks subscription, you can set up uh, whatever you want. Like uh, if you want, I can show it to you. Uh, this is my uh, I'll, I'll, uh, estimate, you know, by the time it, the cluster gets ready, I'll show you uh, the Databricks, uh, you know, paid edition. This is my Databricks paid edition, wherein you can set up your uh, clusters to anything you want, right? This is my Databricks paid edition. If you could see, uh, I create clusters, I mean, it's just the same. But if you could see this uh, for the paid edition, you'll have much more options than what you have uh, rig earlier. This is, you can select the runtime and then you, here the comes, uh, it comes, you can select any of the cores, any of the GB RAM, you can uh, increase the processors. You can select uh, workers, minimum workers and maximum workers. Uh, a lot more uh, functionalities are there in uh, the subscripted uh, version of the Databricks. But for to start up, you don't have to worry about the paid version of it. So this is just uh, a community edition which we are going to learn and see. Uh, if you could see this green uh, thing, it is uh, it indicates that the cluster is still yet to be set up, right? So. You can see here on the tab, you can uh, create clusters. You can uh, create, this is the workspace. 
and this is the data tab wherein you can save all your uh, data in terms of csv files excel files packet formats anything and you can also connect to different clusters different uh, data sources like amazon Rep redshift and all so whenever you uh, start any cluster as long as it doesn't get started you'll always see uh, the database as blank once the clusters are created here you will see a green tick mark here and then you will see a database called default so your database name itself is default you can save any number of tables in here you use uh, SQL queries, you can use uh, Spark uh, queries, you can use Pandas uh, thing, you can use Scala, you can use R and everything, right? So if at all you want to upload a CSV file or an Excel file, you just need to create, click on the create table. Once you create, uh, click on that particular tab, you'll have this upload file. You can directly drag and drop uh, your desired files or else uh, you can connect to your Amazon S3 buckets and uh, this is called dbfs is uh, databricks file storage system <coughs> sorry uh, this is the folder wherein you will have uh, file store and the tables you can uh, this is just a folder nothing else you know you can save any of your uh, csv files excel files any folders and thing but the thing is you cannot directly right click anything is it doesn't work it out you have whatever you have to save this is just the path you cannot uh, directly open any of the files from here you cannot work anything from here. This is just to see what kind of files you have in this. Say, for example, if you want to upload a file, uh, uh, we click on here. Say, for example, I want to create a, a test uh, folder here. And then I'll uh, directly browse or uh, drag and drop my files. Uh, so uh, just a minute. I'll, I'll, uh, I have uh, my files here. Say, for example, I want to upload this CSV file, right? So I just drag and drop here, and this the file has been updated, right? So if you want to see your file, whether it is really uploaded or not, just click on the DBFS file. And this is the file store, and this is the table, and then we have created a test folder here just now, and then this is uh, the uh, CSV file which you have just uploaded but the thing is like you cannot uh, you know right click or you cannot open any of the files here right just to remember that uh, just to see if our cluster has been created I guess uh, normally uh, it takes around uh, two to three minutes for the cluster to be created and uh, until and unless we uh, get the cluster up and running we cannot work on any of the files so as while it is uh, under process, we can see how we can start a notebook. So click on the workspace, when I'm, click on the left tabs here, click on the workspace, click on users. And this is just your email ID. And then uh, you can create any of your file. Uh, I'll uh, create a notebook. You can also create folders. You can also create uh, notebooks. When uh, I click here, the default language is Python. Uh, you can select with Scala, you can uh, work with R, you can work with uh, SQL. But again, this is just a uh, default language wherein your notebook starts it. Uh, I guess uh, I will write as, uh, this can be any name, but uh, you, if you could give a meaningful name, that would be better. Uh, you can give uh, anything, right? I'll uh, create a notebook in the default language as Python. So if you could see here, this is still, this is a cluster. It is still not yet, uh, you know, connected. Uh, it is still running up. As you know, this is when if you could see this uh, green tick mark, I think I have to zoom it out. So this is uh, the tick mark wherein uh, it shows the cluster has been created. If you want to see it again, uh, go to compute. See here, this is created, right? So we'll go back to our. Uh, notebook again so this is like a similar kind of Jupyter uh, notebook interface wherein you can write your uh, basic plan because the standard uh, you know programming language which we have created for this notebook is Python you can write uh, part shaker and then shift enter or control enter just like you do in our regular Jupyter notebooks right for the first time when it starts it normally takes some time you know waiting to run 
So once it is done, it is connected, you will have the output here. Uh, you can also write some SQL queries like uh, this is uh, the magic uh, command, like percentage SQL. As soon as you write here, the standard uh, programming language for this particular cell is SQL. And if you uh, delete it, and then the standard method is Python because we have selected Python as a standard default language for this particular notebook. You can uh, uh, write percentage SQL here and then write, say, for example, select uh, art shaker. That's it. So you can work with SQL commands. Right, this is just a basic table. And you can also work in R. Like say, for example, if you want a percentage R, write print, run R, and then and if you are uh, familiar with these things, you can write code as uh, I think it's in capital letters. So it is running. So the run R is done, right? So you can also do some mask uh, programs in Scala. This is also a, a magic method. As soon as you write anything here, you just have to uh, use this uh, magic methods. Say so example like print ln run Scala. I think this should work. So I think it is taking some time, but uh, I'm sure it works. Yes, it does. So this is the basic setup wherein you can have uh, uh, different programming languages which you're comfortable with. You can work with uh, those kind of things, right? Say, for example, uh, the best thing in uh, Databricks uh, is like the Spark environment is already created in and uh, in uh, regular uh, Jupyter notebooks, you have to write as uh, Spark session, Spark session dot builder, and everything, right? Uh, like to create a Spark session, but uh, in this Databricks, the Spark session is already created. If you could uh, check it out, uh, if you write Spark as thing. Uh, you could see the Spark environment is already created. The Spark session is already created. You don't have to worry about writing different uh, you know, Spark session things before uh, running anything, right? So this gives us uh, the basic uh, introduction of uh, Databricks and to work on different notebooks. And in the next video, we'll see how to upload a CSV file and how to work with different CSV files, different Excel files and all. Thank you all. Thank you very much for watching.